get started. I'd like to welcome all of our families and friends who have joined us this evening to celebrate the successes of our children. Thank you all so much for coming. I'd like to start the evening off by thanking the Board of Directors for providing the refreshments and snacks for this evening. Um, right now, we currently have uh, Stephen Young here, who is the Treasurer on the Board of Directors. I'd like to give him a little thank you for... Oh, and Stephen Leung, you wake everybody? And Mr. Nadia Bay, who is the Vice President of our Board of Directors. And I'd also like to thank Jordan. Did Jordan just come in? Yes. Okay. I'd like to thank Jordan Locke here as well, the director. And I'd also like to thank Ms. Alice Spearman, who's the secretary for the board and the board liaison. They were very generous tonight, and we appreciate everything that they've done for us. Now I'd, like to <laughs> now I'd like to introduce our friend, Carl Chen, who is a member of the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce. On, the, on behalf of the Family Advisory Committee, we would like to express our sincere thanks for everything you have done to support our students, families, and Ames community. Oh, thank you. I didn't realize I'm going to speak first, but I do know that you can get the uh, uh, arrangement. Come on, thank you for coming to the meeting. The reason why I'm speaking first, normally it should be the mayor supposed to speak first, but I know she's in the meeting, but she is on her way. Uh, since uh, Jean and I look alike, so I will pretend to be the mayor for uh, a few minutes before she comes in. You are Chinatown mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, I, I just want to say, and my, I want to express my sincere thanks uh, for many parents uh, for what you have done for your kids to get the best education as our parents would like to do for all of us. And I'm so happy that not only about the parents, it's all about the teachers. And the teachers have done so much to make sure that you get the best education as possible. So in the future, you'll not only be a good student, but you're going to be someone wonderful and serving us in the community. In addition, I understand that we have some uh, board members been serving you time, you know, uh, time you know, for, for especially in the, dip, the most difficult time, and trying to maintain the opening of the school so that all of you have a, the opportunity to, be, to get the best education. And I also want to thank our media, our reporter, in fact, you know, he's right here with us. And uh, because of the reporter and the Chinese media and the media covering the story, so many people, not only parents, including me, myself, as someone in the community, but also many other people, they are all in support of the continuing of the opening of the Ames. So would you like to get it, uh, continue to open for the next, another 10, 20, 40 years? Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad because uh, it's going to be what you what you ask for is going to happen, and uh, my understanding is very simple. When you have a desire, when you want to accomplish something, it's going to happen. But it will not happen unless we all work together. Whether you are students, parents, or friends, relatives, or people like us from the community, as long as we work together and put pressure on the people they are making decision and making the right decision for us. Remember, we went through a few levels, jumping different hurdles. First, we went through the Oakland School Board. Last year, they granted you continuing opening for the school. Until last year, end of last year, and something happened. They said, no, 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 we're gonna change it. Do you know why? It's all because the election of the school board members. And the previous school board, we had four to three to allow this school to open. But after the election, we had new school board members. Now that came the trouble. So basically, we lost by one vote. Well, I should say that. We almost won by one vote. So it's a four-three to say no to us. 
And also, bad politics, in my opinion, has been playing in the uh, county school board. We went there and they got all the proper information. But unfortunately, what they are telling us is that do you have substantial evidence to overturn the decision made by Oakland School Board? All right? And unfortunately, they should be educated like you are, so that they learn how to think and think right. But unfortunately, the decision being made, they said no. But guess what? It doesn't matter. When, we, when you guys went to court, guess what they just said? These people are crazy because they never put education and they never put the kids as a priority. And therefore, they just said, Ames, you better stay open. Oakland School Board and County School Board, stay out of it. So you guys win a big battle. So give yourself a big hand on this one. <laughs> Simply said, the next thing that's going to happen is go to the state. So I think what we need to do, we need to talk to some state officials. Let people understand what this school is all about. And earlier, another reporter asked me, why am I supporting it? It's very simple. Anyone, they walk into this school, and if they do have a chance and comparing this to the public school, and I'm not saying public school is bad. Public school is very good, but this one is the very, very best. And that's the reason why when people look at it, they will understand what education is all about. And therefore, many of us will continue, like you, your parents, your students, and teachers, and definitely the board members. We will work together and making sure that this school will stay open, not just one year, not just two years, for the years to come. Oh, let's give a big hand to Mayor Ching Kwan. Okay, I think I, I, I speak long enough, but I just want to quickly talk about our Mayor Ching Kwan. And uh, the reason why Mayor Ching Kwan is here is very simple, just like me. And she also learned so much about this school. Now, but before she learned so much about this school, she also heard a lot of other things that was told to Mayor Ching Kwan. And therefore, it is important for the Mayor Ching Kwan to come and talk to you, so you get to know her, and, and, then, and then you get to tell her why you want to keep the school, and why the education is so important provided by Ames. And I also want to tell you another thing. Throughout the 30, almost 40 years living in, in the city of Oakland in the area, uh, I have met many, many mayors who did wonderful jobs. But this mayor is very different because she, in the history of 150 years, the first Asian Chinese mayor and the first woman mayor, and the mayor which works 24-7 for our city and has done a lot for us. And therefore, I have, many of us are supporting Jean, and uh, therefore Jean has been, to me, is a good mayor. But, again, in this city we have many, many issues to be dealing with, so together we're going to make a major, major difference in the city of Oakland. Uh, I think at this time, I would like to, uh, is that me? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, okay. I'm going to turn the mic back to... Uh, you. Once again, thank you. Hang in there, we're going to keep fighting, okay? Hi, right now I'd like to introduce the director of our schools, Mr. Ruben Ruiz. He's going to give a brief history and overview of the school. Mayor Kwan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think I uh, need the microphone, I got a big mouth, uh, but it's in a good way. Uh, Mayor Kwan, I want to welcome you. Uh, thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, board members, Mr. Bay, uh, Mr. Lockyer, Mr. Leung, thank you for being here. Uh, Mr. Chan, thank you very much for being here with us. Um, one thing I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know, uh, just share our school with you, uh, Mayor Kwan. The, uh, our enrollment is uh, 837 right now. Uh, it's broken down here by American Indian Public School at the McGee campus, 202 students. Uh, downtown campus, AIPCS 2, 489. And our high school, we have 146 students right now. Uh, 
we were really low this summer, students started coming back, they say, hey, we want to go to this school, they tried other schools and they say, you know what, we thought it was, they were better, we're going to come back to, to American Indian uh, school because we feel that's where we're going to get a, an education. Our attendance, we always pride ourselves, uh, Mayor Kwan, that we want 99.5% attendance rate. Uh, normally, schools are happy when they get 90%, 92%. Well, for us, it's not good enough. And we partner with you families because we tell you, we can't educate your child if he's not in school. He's got to be in school. And as a result, our goal is to have 99.5%. So here's our breakdown like with uh, Indian, American Indian Public School at McGee Campus, East, East uh, Oakland, 99%. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we have 99% attendance rate last month. Every month we reported to the Oakland Unified School District. October this month, 995 uh, With American Indian Public Charter School, as you know, we put a kinder through eight. And moms, they, you know, those little guys, this is the first time that they let them out of their sight. And so our attendance has dropped a little bit slightly from up down to 98.7%. And again, you know, little... Uh, Child kindergarten has a cold, so we want to keep them home. And so very protective, and rightly so. They're your children, but again, we got to get to school if we want them to learn. And then at our high school, we have 99.5%. Uh, one student brought our score down to 98 this month. Uh, but again, we talked to the parent. we got to make sure that that child is in school. We can't teach you if you're not here. These are the programs that we have going on with American Indian uh, charter schools, we have the Johns Hopkins uh, program. And the Johns Hopkins program is a program that our students are tested. They take the uh, SAT test uh, and they qualify to attend uh, programs with Johns Hopkins. Uh, it's called the Center for Talented Youth. And they look worldwide for students that have high aptitude scores because they want to groom these kids. They want to work with the families and be able to provide uh, an opportunity for the less fortunate, lower income students that they would not have this opportunity. And so CTY right now, we have, um, uh, it's the oldest and most comprehensive university-based effort that identifies and nurtures exceptional academic talented students in the U.S. and throughout the world. Uh, students take the SCAD and the SAT test to score high enough to qualify to, a, to their programs. Uh, in 2009, they have, we had more than 55% of our students, American Indian uh, charter schools, that qualified and participated in the Center for Talented Youth. Uh, this year, nearly 200 of our second through eighth graders uh, attended uh, uh, with this program and earned qualifying uh, uh, scores to attend. Uh, Oakland City Council honored two of our AIM students. One of them got the U.S. Presidential Scholarship Award. The other received a 2013 National Achievement Scholarship uh, Award. Uh, and again, in addition, uh, we've been uh, nominated as the number one most rigorous high school in the nation, our academics. We have 100% of our students graduate, and 100% of our students go on to college, whether it's a two-year or four-year universities. So we have the SAIL program. It's a, a summer academic intensive learning program where students, we work with them on math skills, provide a lot of math every single day for three weeks uh, in the program. Then we have after school tutoring that teachers, they stay after school and they tutor their kids. We identify the kids that are struggling and right away within three weeks of the school year, those kids are already in tutoring programs and we're supporting them to increase their academic uh, performance. Every student in the high school takes AP classes, beginning with the ninth grade all the way through the 10th, 12th grade. Some of these students, when they end, uh, uh, graduate from American Indian, have two years, up to 60 credit hours of college coursework. So we have some of them that finish in three years instead of the traditional four or five years. TechBridge, a lot of the uh, young girls are bashful, they embarrass, they don't like to speak in public, and TechBridge is a program that targets the young girls here, works with them to get them into the hard sciences, the engineering, the mathematic field. And so it's a great program that helps us start seeing that there's opportunity for girls and not just boys, and we want to nurture those girls to pursue those hard fields. So that's what the TechBridge, and then QuestBridge, 
Last one, but not least of this program, Westbridge is a program that works with low-income families. Our high school students apply to these universities, and they work to bridge the gap, if you may, between the minority and the low-income kids that will never have a chance to attend the big Ivy League schools, schools like Harvard, Yale, MIT, even uh, Stanford. It's difficult to get into Stanford. And so they work with us, and they bridge that gap so that these low-income kids can have the equal opportunity that they would not otherwise have. Uh, and so we, two of our students were recognized. Um, let's see. Uh, Alistair Wong and... Uh, anyway, I'll give you the name for now. There are two students that fought, there are two, two finalists in the uh, in the uh, West Bridge, and they will. Uh, okay, it's Alistair Huang and Min Li. There are two finalists, and if they get selected, they will have a full scholarship to any to the Ivy League schools they want to get to. Those students that don't get selected as a finalist, they also their applications are submitted by Quest Bridge to other universities at no cost to them to. Uh, to support them and you know send their name forward to other universities. These are great kids. We are behind them, and we uh, believe they will be successful in your university. So that's what Quest Bridge does. Last but not least, uh, Mayor Kwan, I want to bring your attention to our scores here. API score, our uh, Academic Performance Index. This year, AIPCS one and AIPCS two. We were number one and number two in all of Lo Oakland Unified School Districts. AIPHS, we took second place, and I'm uh, uh, to Oakland Charter Academy, and I want to fight this and say, come on, teachers, we can do better. we got to get back on top. To me, second place is not good enough. We need to keep fighting. Our kids are that great, and I want them to continue to get that success. Our API is 927, but again, it's a score that many, many schools will love to have. The, our ELL, as you can see, AIPCS2 here downtown. 30% of our students are English language learners. They don't have command of the first language, but even in spite of that, I want to show you that we still perform. We expect the high, the best of these kids. And to end this uh, presentation to you all, uh, Mayor Kwan, the free and reduced lunch. A lot of times, schools say, well, our kids come from low-income families. They can't perform like those kids that have parents at home that are earning high income. To us, we really don't care whether you're low income or high income, we have the same expectations for you. My parents were bakers. My mom had an eighth grade education. My dad had a second grade education. I shouldn't be here, but because I want to do, succeed, I persevered. I was successful coming from a low income family. And that's what these kids have. As you can see, 75% of our kids at the McGee campus are free and reduced lunch. 81% here downtown. And then when you see our high schools, you have to wonder, how is it that 100% of these kids graduate and 100% of them go to college when they're at 83% free and reduced lunch? They're minorities, they're low income. So again, my message to you, Mayor Kwan, is thank you for your support. And we ask you to continue supporting us. When we have this kind of performance, I don't know what else to say, guys. Thank you for your children. Thank you for the commitment you've made to our education and to make sure that your kids are in school so that we can show everyone in the U.S. that, yeah, our kids are just as good as those uh, families that have $100,000 income. We can compete with anybody in the U.S. Mayor Kwan, thank you very much for your time. Advisory Committee is honored to have Oakland Mayor Jean Kwan with us this evening. Mayor Kwan has served the citizens of Oakland for more than two decades and spent 12 of those years on the Oakland School Board. During her time with the board, she led many education reform efforts, reducing class size, instituting higher graduation standards, and developing school to career programs. So without further ado, the Family Advisory Committee welcomes the Honorable Mayor Jean Kwan.
So I actually just came to learn a little bit more about the school because I haven't paid as much attention since I've become a city council member and then um, the mayor. Um, as you know, I've worked with a lot of schools that are similar. Um, we're in, in Oakland right now. The good thing about Oakland, and before I get to your school, is there's been a lot of progress since the time I was a school board member. Um, when I was a school board member, maybe only a quarter of the schools would get to, what's the passing median, 700 now? Yeah. Right. Maybe only a quarter of the schools in the entire school district would get to the 700 level. And um, those would mostly be those in the hills where wealthier parents lived and in some of the schools. Most of the schools my kids went to were always in the 90th percentile, very similar to your scores. And I suspect that there's some in the hills that are still worried about the same as you. Um, and, but, you know, these are kids who have a lot more advantages um, and uh, money and uh, their parents are very, very, very educated, so sometimes the schools don't have to work as hard. Um, but now the school district, over about 60% of all the schools at least make that average, right? And so that's a big difference, and literally twice as many of the schools citywide. So the city, overall, the kids are doing better, but there are not very many schools that do as well as you do, um, right up there at the top. 10 percentile, it seems like that. And um, Lincoln School, although now you've tried, you've sort of split up the population pool, but Lincoln School would usually also, even though the kids were very um, low income, would be right up there in the 80 percentile or would grow um, as years. And you've inherited some of those students, so that's why I think your scores are high. So I have a sort of a special relationship with this school. Um, the first time the charter school was almost closed down, I was on the school board. And I worked um, with the parents at that time to rebuild the board to save the school. Uh, that was for the Laurel campus, on, you call it the McGee campus, but at that time it was in the Laurel. And there were some similar issues of mismanagement of money. And um, the school literally it came to the school board and we almost closed it down, but a group of educators and parents came forward and asked for a one-year extension and promised that they would rebuild the school and make sure that there was no more corruption. And for a while it seemed that that was pretty successful and the school did very well. And then when I got to school board, I expanded to Chinatown. And so now you have, unfortunately, the similar issues. So the one thing I want to say is that no one can deny you have great ac academics. So it sounds like you have good educational leaders. But this time, the parents actually have to stand up and be part of that board and make sure that the finances, sort of like when I was on the school board or what I did on the city council, to make sure that the money is spent correctly. Because I don't think you'll get a third chance. Um, you know, the, it, it just the, it is. The, the history, unfortunately, it's sort of been following the school. And that's when I've had discussions with people. Um, I've said, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong academically with the school. I mean, there may be some complaints that it's not broad enough, but for the size of the school and the facilities you have, it's clear that your, your children are doing very well and that, that the teachers have been able to uh, get the best out of the kids. Sometimes this complaint curriculum could be a little broader, but that's the part of being a small school. When you're a small school, you can't afford the extras that some of the other schools have. And in terms of academics, you're doing really well. So I mostly came to listen to the story and just to, to, to I have been supportive in, of keeping the school open, but I've also I've warned you all that the, I understand the position of the boards, that if, if there's been financial mismanagement, now it's the second time that I understand why they're taking a very tough line, but you fought very hard for the school, and I think that, that people hear that, so I think that you're going to get a chance to succeed, but I think you're going to have to show that you have a very strong board, you're going to have to bring in maybe some independent business people or um, auditors or accountants to make sure this time that your board does it, it you know, that the board does the diligence. Because a lot of times parents get really busy, you only care that your kids are doing well, but a couple of parents and some community people are going to have to step up to strengthen the board, I think, because that's was really a, your only weakness, and so that that's a real problem, and so uh, hopefully you can get past that. So I don't have much to say. Let me about your school. Let me just say a little bit more about the city and uh, about you know the situation with your children. So when people today ask me how's the city doing, I said, well, crime is down and the economy is up, but we could be doing better in both. 
And so, um, you know, becoming mayor at, at the bottom of the recession was very, very difficult. We had laid off, we, we cut and had to cut and lay off people. So it's like having a small school when you really don't have that much room and then you have to cut teachers. It's very hard to keep a good curriculum. It's the same thing with the city. And so when I started as mayor three years ago, we only had enough money for about 500 and 95 cops, and now we're up to a budget that will provide eventually 700 over the next two years. But that's because the city economy is doing well. You know, that we have new businesses, we've opened 70 new restaurants just downtown in this area. Um, people are coming to visit Oakland. The New York Times said that Oakland's one of the best places to visit, put us right between London and Japan because of our diversity and our music and our arts and our culture. And so how that affects your kids is that when the city is healthier and we have more police and more jobs, both it's a slightly safer community, and I'm not saying that we're where we need to be, but it, it is, it, we're doing better. Um, murders and violence are significantly down. Uh, home burglaries are significantly down. Um, but we're still worried about robberies and cell phones, and we're worried about stolen cars. Um, but we've been really working hard to put police around schools in the neighborhood. So in most of the school districts, middle schools, we've been able to add some police officers. Um, and we've been telling our police to get out of their cars and to walk and to get out and to know the students and to know the schools around there. So I'm hoping that happens here too with your charter school. We have a really good um, peer view. The officer here for Chinatown is really very good. So I hope in that thank you. Um, and then in terms of jobs and hope, um, we're going to have like three $1 billion investments in the city. The new Open Army Base Expansion Board. The Chinese investor who just invested in building 3,000 homes over on the estuary. Um, over a billion dollar investment, the largest Chinese investment in the United States. And then now um, Middle Eastern investor who's going to help us build out the Coliseum with hotels and the football stadiums and recreation, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, People are beginning to see that Oakland's a good place to invest, and, and so the city is generally doing well. And when the city does well, we have more property taxes, uh, we have more support for the schools and parks and, and police. So I'm pretty optimistic about, about the overall general future. Um, and when that happens, we also then have money um, for after school programs and, and parks and things that you benefit in the Chinatown area. Michael. So I'm going to take some questions. You said that you understand the school is strong academically and you support it in that avenue, but that um, the biggest concern is the physical mismanagement of the school. When I talk to board members, I talk to state officials, that's what they're worried about. And you suggested the parents step up and make sure that that stops or doesn't happen. Can you give us here some specific action items or recommendations as to how we can I, I don't know enough about how you restructured, but I understand that you've had some outside people. And I, so I don't know how you reorganize your board. I would say to make sure you always have some school parents on the school on your board, right? When I ran for school board, it was because at the time there were no parents on the school board. And when three of us got elected at one time, it helped turn the schools around a little bit. We started going out money for, for school bonds. We started going out for money to reduce class sizes and to save the music program. It it makes a difference, I think, if parents are on the board. So I don't know how you're constructing it, but you can structure it. You know, you have your own rules. You can structure it, and I think that you're supposed to have parents on the board. But the question is, do they? Are these parents uh, and are the other members? You know, if I were you, I'd get an accountant. <laughs> I would get other people to fill out your board. So the, the people, some people who have experience, so that when you go, when anybody questions your 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 governing board, that um, because I'm trying to remember when we rebuilt the board last time. The first time it was because certain families were having some fights and then there were jobs that were given to some families and there was some money that disappeared and it was a mess, right? So make sure that the board members aren't working for the school, right? So there's that little separation, so there's no conflict of interest, right? And to make sure that you have some people from outside, maybe the school community who have impeccable credentials. So let me give you examples. So I had to rebuild the port commission. And the port commission were nice people, but they didn't know anything about the port. And you know, for them it was a way to travel, et cetera, et cetera. So 
I actually had to move people, and I got a lot of flack for that. People he tried to recall me, but, but I needed to have a port commission that actually knew something about maritime and would make sure that we didn't waste any money and that we didn't lose any money. So I brought in some experienced business people who, who didn't have any interest at the port but were very successful businessmen, right? And then I brought in people who had shipping experience. And you know, the same thing with the school board. I think you probably need some strong financial people so they do have that inside voice. And then you need parents who really care and will just, and who have no conflict of interest in terms of businesses that's done, renting, supplies, people who work for the district, that, that kind of thing. And, and, and I think that's really important because, as I said, people sort of, when I tell them, I said, you know, I was there the first time, this is a little slightly different situation. You know, I'm very sad because I knew Ben and I trusted Ben. So I'm very sad about what I, I learned later. So, um, you, you know, but the bottom line is that for some people, the financial issue is probably more important than the academics. Because you as parents, you only care about the academics. But, but you know, they have a fiduciary and legal responsibility. And so that's your biggest black mark, never the academics of the school. Thank you. Yes, first, first of all, I'd like to say uh, it's a real honor to have you here, uh, I wanted to address very, very, very briefly. Yes, uh, I want to say first and foremost that it's a real honor to have Mayor Kwan here. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that uh, we brought on Charter School Management Company. Uh, that's one of the things that OUSD had recommended. They're on, they're, they are making sure that we are in compliance. They are, they are the ones who are actually monitoring and overseeing all of our finances at this time. We're also looking at bringing on three new board members. Two of them are accountants. One is Dr. Boyd here. Uh, he's he's been active in Dr. the Dr. Boyd's an accountant in addition to being Dr. Dr. He's not an accountant, but, but so, so basically what I'm saying is, is that we've gone through two board trainings. We have another board training, uh, I believe, next week. So we're doing everything we can to make all of the adjustments and so forth. So we really recommend, you know, we really appreciate your input. And we it's very important for me to let you know this because the bottom line is you are the most, you have a powerful voice in the city, and if you know what's going on and so forth, we have, you know, we're extremely open with this uh, at this time, and we're trying to make all the changes necessary. And the last thing I'd like to say is, is that we really are trying to get more of the parents who, what I'm telling people is if you know someone who wants to be on the board, submit their name. Come, you know, come here so we can expand the board. But thank you for being here. Thank you. The board, board. I was just saying that, that you were saying that you needed more parents to participate on the board. Right? My child is not that good, so I hope it's okay. <laughs> Those of you who understand Chinese can, can, can trans be translated. He's a parent, he's on the board. Yeah, he's on the I, I just think that's critical because I think it's just the, the unfortunate history that it's happened twice now to so this. So it's it's it didn't and they then people question the academics too, right? But um, you know, I, 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 when I was on the, on the, people asked me how they feel about charters because I said that you have to judge each charter school and each public school separately and how well they perform. You know, I think you would you would do fine as an autonomous small school too within the district. You do okay as a charter if you can get these financials straight. But it's it's really the outcome and the parent involvement. Because I, I have to tell you, when I when people ask me whether it's a rich neighborhood or a poor neighborhood, I say pick the school where the parents are most involved, because those will always be the school where the kids do better. And sometimes, that particularly where there are a lot of immigrant kids, the test scores don't look as good. But you have to watch how they grow each year and whether they keep growing each year. Because sometimes really good schools have sort of mediocre test scores, but it's because it takes longer for the kids to grow up. But in schools like this, because of the after school program and the summer programs, you guys are moving faster than the typical school. And when I was a public on the school board, I tried to do that too. I tried to get mandatory summer school for all the kids who are behind. Right, which is sort of what you do, is you just keep the kids learning all year round. And then um, I've worked a lot as a, as a city council member and as um, 
in the Kids First program and then the Parks and Rec program to make sure that there are more after school programs. We try to put as many of the Parks and Rec programs into the schools as possible. And then we have this program called Kids First where 4% of the city budget goes to after school programs to help kids in schools. And so we try to make those um, good programs, that not just academics, but exercise and music and arts that fill up the curriculum. Any other questions? No other? So my question is, if the school, uh, if the school, if we are uh, the parents to go to public hearing next year, so can you support us for our? I'm sorry to support you to. Go to a public hearing next year if we, uh -oh. if our school, if all our parents here. To When's the public hearing, guys? Next year, yeah. So can you support us for our? <laughs> Which public hearing? I thought you guys had a ruling. You're just in court now. Public hearing. Yeah. You know, we, uh, our department, we have to address that. It's really been cloudy of where the school is right now. Uh, I spoke with the attorneys. I spoke with the attorney this afternoon, and the issue is, is that it's, the state is saying, the state of California is saying we are, that we have not been revoked, so they're not hearing anything. So right now we will be going back to court. We don't have a court date yet. But it's basically everything is in our favor at this time. Yeah. Right, so I don't I, think you're. I, I, you know, I, I'm sorry. I was going to say I don't think you're going to have a hearing. I think you're going to be allowed to continue. So that's right. why I said here, if, 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 if we if, go to the public hearing, okay, all of the parents here, okay, so. Can you support us for this? Uh, you know, I, I will, based on what I know at that time, I'll, I'll, I need to look at your board, I need to look at whatever, but yeah. my well, sense, we, my we sense, just, I'm just yeah. telling you, I'm just trying to make you feel a little bit, um, like, yeah, I'm not so anxious. Okay. It is my sense, well, it, was just so. it is my sense from most officials I talk about that you, you're going to be allowed to continue, so I'm not so anxious about you to be honest. You know, it, it's as long as you keep functioning at a good school and you know you have a strong board, there'd be no reason for them to, to take you over. I mean, it, but the, and that's uh, that you prove that you could do it yourself, that you've done it during this period of time. You've got some old veterans like Alice, and then you've got uh, Dr. Boyd has really been an amazing. He and I were parents together. Our kids Absolutely. went to school together, and he's really stayed. His know, son's a great stayed, teacher. Stayed helping. Um, particularly minority kids in the city for a long time, and I think you've got some good help. And if you can also show that you you're growing new parent leadership here in, in Chinatown, you know, I, you know, and, and you can tell I have a little mixed feelings because I have a lot of love for Lincoln and have a lot of love for some of the other schools in the school district. And, and then to me, it's not a question whether you're a charter or not; it's a question whether you're doing a good job with our kids. So, um, you know, as long as you are so involved as parents, your kids are going to be okay, no matter where they are. But clearly, you help make this special school, and um, hopefully, um, you know, I would actually like to see the school and Lincoln do more activities together, so that you learn from each other. But you know, meanwhile, um, my sense from talking to people about your school is that you really probably, you know, um, I don't think the court's going to overturn it, and the state has taken the position that you're still operating as a school and you're still getting your funds, but they do want you to get this technical assistance, and you know, so I think you have to take it pretty seriously, this company that's working with you, so that they, when they come in and they evaluate your management, that you're absolutely clean. All right, well, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I'd like to say something to all the parents. Um, I am Vice President of the Board. Uh, I'm Jean Martinez, and I'd like to apologize to you all for being late. However, I spent the last four or five days with my daughter, who is in law school at Arizona State. She worked here and volunteered, and uh, I also volunteered for you and my sister, Martina Jones, when you ran for superintendent, and I helped you. Her. So, that was, you were, that was, that was ago. Carol Pond. Carol Pond. Different Pond. Uh, no. The school board. School board. School board. School board. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, school board. Yeah, I, and uh, she, well, you remember Tina, she supported you at Redwood Heights. Uh, and I just want to thank her for uh, coming here tonight and supporting us. So we got a road to go, and we're going to make it. We're going to do it.
and I can't thank you enough for giving us the encouraging words. Thank you so much, Ms. Kwan. Uh, so, just one announcement. So, wherever we go to a meeting, we have a, an e newsletter. I know he gets it, um, uh, that we put out citywide news. And so, um, if you want to be on our email news list, and it always has a lot of fun and free things for kids to do, too. So, we're, this is my assistant, Michael Johnson. So, if you'd like to be on our weekly newsletter, we always have information about things that are happening in the city and usually a lot of good things for kids and families to do together. Thanks. I'm sorry, I think my staff You know, the, the media is often not very kind to Oakland, so you never get an idea of what's really happening in the city. So what we just what some of my friends did is they published a summary of the state of the city. And so like some of the things I said the unemployment's down 4%, we've created 8,000 new jobs, et cetera. The, that's sort of summarized in here. So if you want to get a city, a sense of where the state of the city is, this is, we have this here for you. Thank you. If I'm, if I'm in okay. How, how many of your parents live in Oakland? Does everybody live in Oakland? Yeah. 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 Okay. Go, 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 Oakland. Okay. <laughs> They all your voters. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. All right, so I got some regular stuff that we want to talk with the parents about. On our agenda tonight, we have a flyer from a company called OTX West. This is for grades 6 through 12. What you do is, if you make an appointment with this company, with your child, they give a three-hour computer training session. A parent, a person who is 18 years or older has to accompany them. So that's mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, cousin, auntie. If your child takes this three-hour class where they teach the children about computer programs, they teach them about internet safety and other things like that. They will give your child a $100 voucher. Later on in the month, they have open houses where, guess what? The computers cost $100. So our families, if you need a computer and you are in 6th to 12th grade, this is a perfect way for you guys to get computers for your home. If you guys want to upgrade your computer they do it at a very reduced cost and if you say you want more memory and more hard drive so now it's 150 dollars they only they, you still get to use that hundred dollar voucher so that you're only paying a very small amount but my guess is that the hundred dollar computer that you're going to get for free is going to be perfect for you so we just want to let all of our parents know that with this up core uh, with the upcoming core testing if you want to get your kids working on the computer at home, this is a perfect opportunity for our parents. And there's no, there's no income, so anybody can go. Um, the, the place actually isn't too far away from here. And the people are incredibly nice when I've called in. If any of the parents need assistance with this, you know, the Family Advisory Committee, me, Kent, Sue, Diana, just a jokey. You just ask any of us for help, okay? Um, we're still working on the PE equipment. We are making progress. We're working on it, but um, we're hoping to have some new PE equipment for our kids. Um, yes? Hi, um, I just wanted to say I'm an intern in the so I can also answer any questions. I interned there for two years, and they're really nice. They will work with you on anything you need, and the hours also. And they also offer uh, Spanish training classes, which I actually used to give. So there's also help for um, Spanish speakers, and again, they're really, really friendly, and they'll work with you on anything. They even provide, they have told me that they provide some technical support, too. That's like crazy to get free computers and somebody to help you out if, if something happens. So they, have, they are really here to support all the children of Oakland, and it's just a great opportunity for us. Um, when, also, if they get the computers from OTX, you know, Comcast has, um, has a program where you can get internet access for free. Not free, I think it's nine bucks. Like it's nine bucks. But it's very, very cheap. 
that if you get the computers from OTX, you can get internet access through Comcast. So we can get you that information too. But OTX has been there for a long time. When OTX started out, I was one of the first parents that took my kid and we were able to get a computer some years ago. That's how long they've been. So they're, they're, it's a good program. Take advantage of it. Okay, so this one isn't on the agenda, but we out here we have the AIPCS2 honor roll and the children who have gotten perfect scores on their STAR test. And I hope everybody goes out and takes a look and does a little clap for all those kids because they're amazing. There is so many kids out there that got perfect scores. Our kids are amazing. Uh, the next thing on our list is we are going to have a teacher's appreciation night. It's going to be December 19th, and um, we are going to start about four at each campus. 4.30, we're going to invite all the teachers. And so what we are asking for is parents, if you want to help us out bringing some potluck food, some plates, some wine, because if it wasn't for our teachers, our kids wouldn't be getting a 600 perfect score. So we've got some yellow pads out at the front desk. Anybody who wants to help out, we greatly appreciate anybody who can help us out taking care of this. Um, Mr. Ruiz, you had a couple more things that you wanted to cover? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know, uh, right now we're working at the McGee campus and then we'll be doing the same thing at this campus. Uh, the civil plan for student achievement. It's a, a plan that we have to submit every year to the State Department. And uh, what it is, is we're looking at what things we want to improve in the school. And I want to make sure that you parents get involved in that. Uh, I don't know if you've been involved in the past, but it's part of the involvement process. And what it is, is we're, we are going to be looking at the reading comprehension. It's what we're looking to improve at the McGee campus after doing an assessment of where our kids are and also the writing process. Again, with so many ELL kids, that's something that we really need to focus on and need to start improving those scores. So we're looking at reading comprehension and student, uh, student writing. And then the non-academic goals is I wanna make sure that we continue to provide a safe environment for our kids at every other campus by conducting uh, lockdowns, conducting fire drills. So again, if you have any ideas with how can we continue to keep our campus safe? Run them by me. Uh, run it by Mr. Chu. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chu is our site administrator here. Uh, can you stand up, Mr. Chu? I'm sorry we didn't introduce you earlier. So okay, just let us know what ideas you might have. And last but not least, I mentioned the CTY uh, Center for Talented Youth with Johns Hopkins. This Thursday and Friday, our students are testing. Uh, to see if they can qualify for some of these programs. So again, help us make sure that your child gets a good night rest on Wednesday if they go to the downtown campus. Get them a good meal so they can get their brain going, their uh, energy going. They're going to be testing in the morning here, I believe from 10 o'clock, uh, starting at 10 o'clock here. And then on Friday, my students at the Laurel campus, McGee campus, are going to be testing from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So again, this is a big test. Again, we're looking at nationwide, worldwide, see if our kids qualify, continue to go to the John Hopkins programs in the summer, okay? So again, I just want to let you know, if you have any questions, give us a call, visit us, just grab us when you see us here. We'll be more than happy to talk with you. Thank you very much, Ms. Woodson. A while ago, the mayor said, um, many parents ask her how to pick a good school. She said, look at the school with the most parent involvement. Our school, we have FAC Family Advisory Committee. We welcome everybody to join us to get more involved in the school. Let me translate in Chinese. Now, I want to say that there are some people who want to find a good school. Who should find a good school? The
。我希望各位家長參加我哋學校嗰啲家長會嘅運動，嘅個運動。同時有一樣，我哋好感謝關市長咁猛力幫忙我哋。啊，關市長出年啊，競選你哋大家應該要啊，擁護佢啊。啊啊 ，Steven 有有啲有啲紙同埋你哋簽名嘅幫助，要我市長出面嘅。Okay, so the last thing um, is our next Family Advisory Committee is going to be the second Tuesday of December, December 10th, and we're actually going to turn it into a parent appreciation night. We're going to have a potluck, so anybody who wants to come, please bring something to share, and we're going to have fun, because this year we have had a lot more parent involvement. I am incredibly thrilled that we have had this many parents here tonight, but we have had just as many parents attending all of our other family advisory committees. And so we need to celebrate the fact that we really have been here and we are keeping an eye, an eye out for our children and we are really, we are supporting our school. And our board is doing what they're supposed to do and we're trying to do what we're supposed to do. So um, again, December 10th, little potluck. We're going to celebrate the fact that we're awesome parents to our awesome children. Uh,啲啊啲food啦嚟俾啲啊家啊啲啊啲家長啊俾啲先生啊食嘅，咁咧希望啊啲家長要有參加啦，或者啊帶啲啲福利啦，或者啊donation啦，acceptable嘅，
that this school is very similar to West Point in the sense that West Point is a great university. It is not for everyone, okay? If you're not interested in getting up and running four or five miles a day, it's not for you. This is a great school. My, when, my three boys went to, when my three boys went here, I had the same issue. My boys were getting at detention. They didn't do their homework. Detention. Came a minute late. Detention. School's not for everyone, but it's a great school. And I hope that you continue to participate. And we need more of you to come and get on the board and just participate with everything we're doing. You're doing a great job. Related to that, though, I was wondering why the detentions changed from uh, being able to do homework to having to be silent and sit there. Because you know, every moment is precious in regards to Mr. Ruiz? A lot of it. it has not changed. And if that's happened, then thank you for letting me know. It has not changed. Okay. Well, they can do their homework? No, they cannot do homework in the detention. The thing is that you parents expect us, we, we have two to three hours of homework every night. And if your child has detention, then why would we reward them by letting them do some of those two to three hours in there when they got in trouble, first of all? And so we've never allowed them to do detention during, uh, to do homework during detention. We have tutoring. And if your child has tutoring and detention, tutoring is the most important for us. So he goes in there and he gets tutored in what he might need help in, but not to do his homework. Homework is home work. It's at home. <laughs> they can go to tutoring. I will never deny your children tutoring. If they're low, first of all, if they're not uh, performing well academically, they have to go to mandatory tutoring. That's a given. If they also get in trouble, we'll take care of them in Saturday school. They got to get tutored. To me, that's the most important. Academics. That they got in trouble, we'll deal with the trouble after tutoring. But tutoring takes precedence over anything. Then they'll have get their consequence for detention. Okay? Thank you. Okay, anybody else? I can do it. <laughs> yeah, um, related to that detention, I noticed that the kids when doing the detention, they were not allowed to do homework. But Another thing is, why do they just sit there doing nothing or have the head down doing nothing? That's a waste of time, right? Well, the teacher gives them to do extra work that they're sitting there doing nothing or head down, closely. Yes, and we'll talk to the teachers again because I think that detention, they should be reflecting. What did I do wrong and how can I fix my behavior? That's the things that they should be reflecting on. How am I going to make things better? And that's something we're going to be talking to the teachers. We're doing more and more professional development on Fridays, and those are things that we're uh, going to be sharing with the teachers, that, yeah, they can't just sit there and steal the oxygen for the kids that are using their brain to work. Okay? So we want them to also be working. Okay? But it's not going to be doing schoolwork, their, their homework. They need to take that home and do it. A lot of parents say, well, he got to do the homework at home, and then he comes home, and he doesn't have any homework. So we're in a bind here also, because the parents say, he can't be playing Nintendo games. I want him to do homework. So that's why we say that for home. And we'll be talking to teachers that they need to be doing some academic thing while they're in detention. The, uh, sitting there doing nothing is not acceptable. But again, they're also not going to be there for detention. Say, gosh, I've got to sit there for an hour and do nothing. This is boring. I hate this. We don't want them to love detention. We want them to hate it so they don't go there again. Okay? That's the whole purpose. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I can say uh, I actually graduated recently from a charter school also, and that was actually... Can we listen up and give her the respect we gave you also, please? Um, I was saying I came out from a charter school, and now that I'm at a UC, I can actually see how that discipline actually really did help me. And my, I went to Oakland Unity High Charter School, and they had the exact same disciplinary um, actions towards us, and they actually had us there sitting and writing a two-page essay. So like, we did get to hate, you know, and not be late. And it was our responsibility. And now that we're in a higher education, it teaches us that we do need to take the responsibility. Our parents are not going to be there to be responsible for us. So we have to learn it. And at a younger age, it's way more easier to transition into a higher education where we are the ones that, you know, take responsibility for ourselves. 
So my little you. brother actually, uh, he says that he does stuff in detention. So Thank yeah, you it's much. a big change, but it's good. Thank you very much. sharing this. Um, we are working with a vendor. We have asked a vendor to try and find some jackets for us. Um, he's but, come but to... It's not, it's not bad because lying is just one of the things. So how do you wear it? Every kid has a health issue. Some kids wear it nothing. Some needs to be worn clothes. Well, that's... Some clothes are so good and white. It's just exception. Just make it two or three months. Why not so hard to buy, or we have to buy something instead of being Well, we number one, uh, we have sweatshirts, and we have things that we can share uh, with any families. And and I completely, you know, my my daughter, I have to stop. I have to find this stuff for her too, and I, I realize it, that it's harder to find this stuff for boys. Um, it's a little bit easier for the girls, but we have the same issues too, where everything comes with a hood, and so that's why we can get the kids hooked up with some sweatshirts. Um, we have the white sweatshirts with the American Indian logo on it that we can get out to some of the families that need that need the extra warmth for their children. And as I said, we're going to get a vendor in here who's going to, we're trying to get him to find some kind of middleweight jackets with no hoods so that we can offer this easier for the, you know, because the other thing is that we have kindergarten all the way up through high school. So, you know, eighth grade, you might be able to find it, but the kindergartners are having the worst time finding this stuff too. All their stuff is cute and poofy hoods and all that. So that's why we have to find some special vendor who's going to be able to meet our needs to have this clothing available for all the grades that's going to meet the school's, the school's dress code. Before I answer that, uh, let's go ahead and I'll come right back to you. Okay, I say the same thing as he said when I uh, moved my child to this school. I was like, but it's so hard to find a white cloth for him. It's hard, but it's not impossible. I run all over, and I get it. And the other yeah. thing is, if you find a place, yeah. if you find a place that sells cheap shirts or cheap jackets, let us know so we can share that with everybody, okay? One, one thing I want to say is to your question here. I'm a stickler for uniforms. We have a uniform policy. Everybody's aware what the policy is. We didn't fool you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay with me, stay with me. You saw that there's no hoodies and all. We didn't fool you and tell you, oh, you can wear anything you want, and then later say, oh, but not that. We didn't fool you by anybody. We didn't fool anybody. You all knew that. Now, I'm a stickler for uniforms, but I have never taken a kid's sweatshirt that's solid white with a hood. I'm a stick, but I have never done that. I'm not going to let your child freeze. I'm not that cruel. I'm a human being, and I work with you. The only thing is, make sure that your kid gets the right sweatshirt eventually. I'm not going to take it from a little freeze. Like I said, I'm harsh on uniforms, but I have not taken a sweatshirt from a child that has a hood. All I said is, remove the hood. Remove the hood. You know what uniform I take when a kid brings a blue or an athlete Asa Asa sweatshirt with a hood? That's completely a complete disregard for the policy. Today I had a student show up with jeans. Hello, you think it's okay and you're a high schooler? I don't think so. But again, again, like I told you, like I told you. 
you don't just talk to me about uniform things. I know we did that three months. Just go go. Raincoat. White raincoat. White. Do you have it? Huh? Do you have it? Okay, sell it. Please. Okay? So again, the thing. We will be yeah, yeah, yeah. We will be everywhere, but we can find it online, every store. Okay, if somebody finds it, please let us know, and then we're going to send a memo to the parents so they know where to get these, okay? That way we can keep you informed, okay? We have a question over here. Let's see what she has to say. Hold on. See. Okay, let's listen up, please. She says that she's got her daughter that's been here five years. So she said before she got her daughter here, she had to understand and accept those rules that American Indian charter school has. A mí me importaba más que ella viniera a estudiar y también me importaba el uniforme, cómo se iba a mirar. And so to me it was more important that she come somewhere where she would learn, but also what uniform she was using. Yo creo que necesitamos nosotros como padres a aprender a entender las reglas para poder crear los hijos a la escuela. She says that as parents, she feels that you need to understand what the policies are when you bring your child in. Okay, so again, thank you. And she says that's what makes the difference between this school and all the other schools out there. And again, we, we can help. We, we can help. If anybody needs sweatshirt and you're, you're kind of stuck and you can't find something, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll get you something. We can help any family here because we are one big, well, not always happy, but we're one big family. You know how it is? Um, anybody else with a question? Yes. Actually, in regard to the white sweatshirt and the wrinkles, you can go find it in Walmart or Target. They do have it. And then even the uniform. You go to Jason you may see they have it. We didn't talk about the uniform. Uniform and the wrinkles. Yeah, the jacket and the wrinkles, they do have it. Yes. And if you can find it, yeah. Yeah, they do have it. They just have to get the fact why they can reach it. They just hit it all. Thank you. Yes. Hey guys, listen up, please. Let's be respectful of each other. Thank you. I brought a jacket from the school here one month ago, but I I think it's not warm enough for the kids during the winter. And my son told me he still feel cold when he go to school in the morning. This is what I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. The, 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 the one we bought is too thin. Mm -hmm. We bought the heavy jacket. Mm -hmm. the ski mm -hmm. I, I'm from Arizona. I'm a desert rat. <laughs> I get cold. This is freezing for me already. So I wear stuff underneath. Yeah. And then my jacket. So again, get them a big sweatshirt. They can wear long thermos underwear underneath. Uh, a black long sleeve as long as you don't see it and then you put the sweatshirt over so again layers i did that when i was in the military i'd be out in germany in snowstorms i bundle up you just got to get a big sweatshirt so you can put sweaters underneath and i think i'll take care of it guys i don't think it's that now and the other thing is that if if your child does get in trouble and you think you're following the rules then we need to have a conversation again with the teachers to just make sure everybody's on the same page, right? And the thing, we don't spend a whole lot of time outdoors. You guys know that. We're all about academics. They eat quick, they go back in. They don't have time to get cold. As soon as they come, they come in. So when you start wearing, dressing warm, you're going to be taking the clothes off in the classroom. And that's okay, but let them layer up. Okay? All right. Okay, so now we have lots of food in the back. And if anybody else has any questions? I'll be around. All right, well, there's refreshments and there's some food back there, so please eat up and thank everybody for coming and hope we see you on December 10th. Thank you, Thank you so much.